Hello, my name is Sarah and I'm currently enrolled on the AI planning course from the University of Edinburgh. This video is an entry for the creative challenge aspect of the course, but I hope you can enjoy this video even if you aren't enrolled on the course. As you can see from the title of this video, AI planning for the real-time strategy game StarCraft, I have chosen to explore some of the potential AI planning techniques that could be used to develop an AI to play the game StarCraft. I've decided to look at StarCraft not only as a fan, but because I was inspired by the StarCraft AI competition that takes place yearly, organised by the RTS Game AI Research Group at the University of Alberta and sponsored by the AI for Interactive Digital Entertainment Conference. There have been some outstanding AIs created and I think there is a lot more to come from future AIs too. For those of you who are not familiar with StarCraft, it is a science fiction game that was released in 1998, followed by a sequel that was released in 2010. The original StarCraft is seen by many as one of the greatest and most important games of all time, not only in terms of gameplay, but also by the fact it set so many high gaming development standards, particularly in RTS games. StarCraft is a fairly complex game, with many things to consider, but the ultimate goal of StarCraft, and thus the goal of our AI, is... Win the game! To win the game, one player has to destroy the other player's bases and units, or at least enrage the other player enough that they quit. In the StarCraft AI competition, AIs are pitted against each other, so the latter option of enraging the other player doesn't really apply. Winning the game. It sounds simple, right? Well, StarCraft can be complicated. It has many gameplay choices, and there are many strategies employed. A human player usually picks their strategies according to their own personal playing style, practiced execution, the faction they are playing against, what resources they currently have, what the opponent is building, defending against attacks, scouting the area, potential expansions, and so on. This means our AI will have a fair bit to think about. Initially though, our AI has to choose a faction to play as. There are three factions, and each faction has different strategies and units they can use to win the game. We could choose one of the well-documented build orders or attack plans readily available online, but that would only get us so far. A player needs to have a very dynamic thought process as their opponent builds units to counter them, as well as recuperating from failed attacks and attacks from your opponent. Usually, when a player sits down to play a game, they have a plan of how they are going to play in their mind. For example, which units and buildings they are going to build, when and how they are going to attack and defend. This plan may, and usually does, change depending on the opponent. This will be true for our AI too. This is where AI planning comes into play. Dr Gerhard Winkler of the University of Edinburgh defines planning as the explicit deliberation process that chooses and organises actions by anticipating their outcomes and aims at achieving some pre-stated objectives. AI planning is the computational study of this deliberation process. To put this into our StarCraft context, our AI will need to choose and organise its actions based on what their outcomes will be in order to achieve the objective of winning. For example, the AI may choose to take the action, build marines or build tanks. The effect of building marines or tanks means that AI will be able to attack the opponent. Attacking the opponent and defeating them results in achieving the objective of winning the game. One of the most fundamental techniques used in AI planning is search. Search is made up of several components. The initial state of the search is as the name implies, the initial state. For our StarCraft AI, this will be the very, very start of the game before any actions have occurred. Search also contains a set of actions. For our AI, this will involve building units, moving units, attacking, etc. These actions have applicability conditions. For example, our AI will be unable to move its marines if it hasn't actually built any first. These actions obviously change the state, and in AI planning, we can often see actions and states paired together. Finally in search, we have the goal state. This is key to our AI. It's the win in the game bit. 
The process of getting from the initial state to the goal state is the path. The cost of the path is another key aspect of search. Each action has an associated cost. The optimum solution to a problem is the lowest cost of all the actions to reach the goal. For example, if we consider pathfinding, that's getting from one place to another, the optimum path moving an army from A to B is clearly two. Path cost doesn't just refer to physical paths, like the one in our example, it can refer to other more complicated problems. Looking back at our example, number three is a valid route to the goal, it just isn't optimal. Finding an optimal path to the goal is fine when the search space is small. Searching to find an optimal solution takes an increasing amount of time. So as the problem gets more complex, our AI will likely have to make a trade-off between being optimal and being fast to find a solution. To put this into a bit more context, the popular A star search heuristic algorithm is great for finding the optimal path to the goal, but it takes longer to calculate. For our StarCraft AI, using an A star search algorithm would be a good idea for pathfinding. On the other hand, greedy algorithms are great for quickly finding a path to the goal, but it might not be the most optimum. In the StarCraft AI competition, the Aya AI used a greedy based search algorithm for its mood selection policy. You may have noticed I've used the word states a few times. A state is quite simple as it is a way of modelling the current state of the problem. For our StarCraft AI, we may have states such as attacking, defending, building, exploring, etc. A state space search searches through all the states as nodes in a search tree. On the other hand, there is plan space search, which we may use for some more complex problems our StarCraft AI will face. Plan space search also searches through nodes, but these nodes are made of partial plans. Plan space uses refinement operations, named arcs, that aid the AI to move between the partial plans and solutions that are partial order plans. An example of plan space search is POP, partial order plans. We can define this basically in our context, that instead of working out how the AI will win the game from the very start of the game, using partially ordered plans, the AI will work out how to solve smaller problems it faces in the game. Again, putting this into context, we may give our AI a partial plan. This would be a set of actions arranged in a partial order, taking a before state and giving an after state. For example, our AI may be in a state of having zero units and the goal is to attack one unit, let's just say a hydrolisk. Our AI would need to build some units that are capable of attacking hydrolisks. Three marines should probably do. The AI would need to move the marines to a position they can attack carry out the attack, avoid the hydralisk killing all of the marines and eventually kill the hydralisk. Of course, this could be one potential plan to kill the hydralisk. The AI could select another unit or set of units to attack the hydralisk or even choose not to attack it at all. The opponent could have chosen to reinforce the hydralisk during our AI's attack with say two more hydralisks, which would likely make the goal of killing the original hydralisk impossible so the AI has to refine its plan and may choose to retreat and save the marines or perhaps continue fighting as taking out one of the three hydralists is more important than the marines surviving. There is one final planning technique I'm going to mention and that is HTN, Hierarchical Task Network. HTN is similar to partial order planning and in fact some HTN planners are also partial order planners. A HTM planner is an example of a plan space search. HTN is made up of three different types of tasks. Primitive tasks, compound tasks and goal tasks. For our AI, the primitive tasks would be a simple action. For example, building units or moving them. Compound tasks are more complex tasks that require a sequence of actions. 
for example, attacking an enemy's base expansion would require the building of several types of units, moving them, attacking the base and defeating the units, and possibly making use of the AI's units as special abilities. Goal tasks are conditions that need to be met, so destroying the enemy's main base is a goal task. Probably the most notable difference between HTN and POP is that HTN refines its plans using a method known as task reduction. This means choosing a non-primitive task and generating refinements that will reduce the task. This is probably easiest to show in an example. Given a compound task of destroy enemy expansion, we can break that down into making units, moving units and attacking. We can then break that down even further into build marines, build tanks, build marauders, build vikings and build a medevac. And again we can break that down even further that we research sim packs and research combat shields. I hope this has given you a little more insight into the potential of using AI planners for StarCraft. I said before that there have been some great AIs made already, but the truth is, those AIs are just not up to human standards. The top human StarCraft players can defeat the top AI StarCraft players without too much difficulty. Each year, the AI submitted to the competition get better. Could we soon see the AIs defeating human players? If an AI can defeat human players in a game of war, could we see this become a reality? Could nations utilise AIs to coordinate their entire war efforts? Perhaps, but the only clear answer is that AI and AI planners have a very, very interesting future. Thank you for watching.